Clause 7, product or service realization, is at the heart of how the organization conducts its business, produces its product or provides its service. 7.1 states the requirement for a process to cover planning for product or service realization. The output is commonly referred to as the quality plan. Much flexibility is allowed in the form of the planning output, which could be, for instance, tabular, flowchart or textual, whatever the organization considers suitable for its operation. The plan will identify the what, the how and the who of its product or service realization in terms of quality objectives, requirements, processes, documents, resources, verification or testing, and records showing evidence of meeting requirements. Many organizations will use project management software to plan and monitor progress against plan. There can be overlap between the planning required here for 7.1 and the planning required for design and development described lower down under 7.3. Customer-related processes are described under 7.2. How are customer requirements obtained and documented and reviewed, bearing in mind that regulators are advocates on behalf of customers and the public, and they also have requirements? How are any changes introduced, documented and controlled? What is the process for effective and easy two-way communication with customers regarding product or service information, inquiries, amendments and customer feedback at key points in design and development. Take time to do a self-assessment. The output from 7.1, Planning of Product Realization, is commonly referred to as a what. Name two broad categories that are described under 7.2 customer related processes. Pause the presentation here and answer both the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. 7.3 goes to the heart of controlling design and development, while planning required in 7.1, which we just talked about on the previous slide, covers the whole range of activities for product or service realization, including production and manufacture. Planning required under 7.3 is specific to a unique design instance of a specific product, project or contract. Planning under 7.3 does not need to repeat processes covered under 7.1, but only document what processes will cover design and development related activities prior to manufacturing and production, such as appropriate review, verification and validation activities for each stage of design and development. This is a good point at which to apply some form of risk assessment and management where appropriate, such as failure modes and effects analysis, shortened to FMEA or FMEA. The design and development process needs to cover how to take customer and other requirements identified under 7.2 for input to design and development and transform these into output that can be identified and verified as conforming to those requirements and specifications. In addition, the process needs to be reviewed at various planned phases or stages of development to identify problems in meeting requirements and take appropriate corrective actions. The plan also requires validation to demonstrate that the resulting product will satisfy the requirements for user application and intended use. Good control over documentation and record keeping is essential for all design and development activities such as planning, 
inputs and outputs, and verification and validation. It is also important to demonstrate control over design and development changes, which happen more often than not. Time for another self-assessment. Identify the incorrect element in planning under 7.3 Design and Development. Requirements Review, Verification, Validation, Product Inspection. Why is that not in scope? What activity helps to identify problems in meeting requirements and taking appropriate corrective actions? Pause the presentation here, answer all the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. The purchasing process required by 7.4 of the standard ensures suppliers are evaluated and selected based on their ability to provide products and services that meet requirements. This requires the gathering and recording of very specific purchasing information and verification and inspection of purchased product. This verification or inspection may occur upon delivery at the receiving station or at the supplier's premises. The production process as required by 7.5 covers the manufacture of product and subsequent provision of service. This requires that production be carried out under controlled conditions according to a production plan including, for instance, the use of equipment predetermined as suitable and reliable and subject to monitoring or measurement if applicable. There shall also be planned appropriate activities governing product release and delivery and post-delivery service. Sometimes it is not possible to adequately or reliably verify production output by, say, monitoring or measurement without destroying the product. In such cases, the production process needs to be validated for its ability to achieve planned results prior to commencement of production. There may also be a need for periodic revalidation. 7.5 requires the proper care of customer property while under the control of the organization. Customer property may include intellectual property and personal data. Finally, this clause also requires that product be uniquely identified and traced where this is appropriate. This may be done in various ways, including configuration management. This also helps with the requirement for product to be preserved in a good state of conformance in its whole and in its parts throughout the stages of processing through to final delivery. As regards the control of monitoring and measuring equipment, calibration can be done internally or by a supplied service. If this is done by a service supplier, it shall be done according to the purchasing process in 7.4. If your company does its own calibration internally, then this needs to be done following a procedure in accordance with Clause 7.6. This requires good record keeping, which will almost certainly be reviewed by auditors. Take time to do a self-assessment. Verification or inspection of goods from suppliers must be done upon delivery at goods receiving. True or false? Using suitable equipment subject to monitoring and measurement is an instance of carrying out production under what conditions? When is it necessary to validate a production process? How 
Is monitoring and measuring equipment controlled? Pause the presentation here and answer all the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. The last of the main clauses is 8, Measurement, Analysis and Improvement. 8.1 explains the purpose of this clause. To demonstrate acceptability of product, determine that the QMS has been documented and implemented in conformity to the standard, and to continually improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the QMS. 8.2 tells us what has to be monitored and measured at a minimum. Firstly, customer satisfaction. The standard requires that the methods for doing this need to be determined. Then there have to be internal audits conducted at planned intervals to confirm whether the QMS conforms to the standard in its documentation and implementation. Thirdly, the processes making up the quality management system have to be monitored and, if possible, measured to check whether they are, in fact, effective in achieving what they were set up to do. Finally, the product itself shall be monitored and measured to verify that it conforms to all requirements. Records must be maintained for all monitoring and measurement done under 8.2. Take time to do the self-assessment. The purpose of measurement and analysis is threefold. Can you name all three? The standard requires which methods to be used to monitor or measure customer perception. Pause the presentation here and answer the assessment questions, then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you've checked your answers. According to Clause 8.3, a documented procedure must be established for controlling and dealing with non-conforming product. The first obligation regarding non-conforming product is to identify it as such and prevent its unintended delivery or use. There are various ways that the standard permits for dealing with non-conforming product. If it is reworked or repaired as a correction, it must be re-verified to demonstrate conformity. 8.4 requires data from various sources to be collated, analyzed and trended for the purpose of improving customer satisfaction, supplier performance, product quality and process effectiveness, as well as identify opportunities for improvement and preventive action. Take time to do the self-assessment. What is the first obligation regarding non-conforming product? What are some of the purposes for analyzing data according to 8.4 of the standard? Pause the presentation, answer the assessment questions, and then proceed to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. 8.5 makes clear that continual improvement of the effectiveness of the QMS is not an option but a requirement. 8.5 also requires the establishment of a documented procedure to handle corrective actions which seek to eliminate the causes of non-conformities which have occurred, and preventive actions, which seek to eliminate the causes of potential non-conformities which have not yet occurred but for which one or more root causes have been identified. Corrective action should not be confused with a simple correction, which addresses a non-conformity without dealing with the root cause. 
take time to do the last self-assessment. Provide a definition or description for each of the following. Correction, corrective action, preventive action. Pause the presentation and answer the assessment questions before proceeding to the next slide to check your answers. Pause and then resume the presentation once you have checked your answers. This concludes the course on Essentials of ISO 9001-2008. If you have questions or wish to follow up in any way, contact the author and presenter, Terry McCann, at the email address on this slide, terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca.